All right, these AI tools may or may not be better than ChatGPT. Please use responsibly. I know you want to learn about other apps because ChatGPT's kind of got this huge, huge win on the market right now, but maybe you should check out Jasper. Jasper is a tool that is extremely interesting. It is one of the only AI applications that manages to not only keep getting investment as it raised $125 million in the fall and got a $1.5 billion valuation. That's right with a B. Even though OpenAI was starting to take off at that point. And that's because it's a copywriter that continues to do really well. Content creators like Easelow are using it. And the interesting part about Jasper is that you never lose your voice. Now, what does this mean? According to them, the tone of voice defines the conversation about your brand, whether you speak boldly, cheekily, formally, you know, I got a little like a quippiness to me. And this, this right here is an application that would keep that in mind. When looking at the pricing, you'll notice that there is a tier for creators, teams, and then custom pricing for businesses. And a key call out on the pricing page is the fact that there are brand voices. Now, the key thing to note here is that when you are creating anything, from a tech standpoint. If it's not on brand and it seems off, people are gonna notice that. So as somebody who's a little bit more cheeky, unless I tell ChatGPT to have a similar tonality to me, it's just not gonna pick up on the way that I want things to be said. But Jasper quite literally has the ability to memorize my brand voice in ways that other generative AIs are not able to right now. Well, it may be one of the more expensive options, $39 a month, isn't insane when you consider the amount of money you can make from copywriting, whether it be for your own business or for others. And as other applications keep coming out, I'm sure they'll get more competitive with their pricing. And this app is definitely on the rise. There's a reason that this thing's got a 4.8 out of five stars in over 10,000 reviews. Definitely check it out if you're interested in improving your copywriting and maintaining your brand voice. Number two is Google Bard. Now, clearly Google Bard is a competitor to ChatGPT. And unlike ChatGPT, it is a little bit more of a tame down version of the application. It's still sort of in that experiment mode. But what I will say is that Google keeps announcing more and more things that they're gonna add to their generative AI workspace. And Google Bard is just the beginning. Like for example, if I click here, I wanna write a novel, how do I get started? Unlike ChatGPT, it will not only give me this one output, which came out pretty quickly, it will give me some other drafts to choose from. So it gives me a little bit of a different idea here. And it has the ability for me to click this and copy it, or click here and Google it based on these different related topics. Now what's gonna happen moving forward is that this search engine is gonna have sort of these little tidbits come into play. I made a video on the Google AI updates that you can go check out. They're intending on having stuff like this be able to be integrated into Gmail. So for example, I could take an example email that I would write. So write an email to my boss about getting those TPS reports to him ASAP tomorrow. And after this would be generated, there's going to be the ability to click a little button and then send it via Gmail. Most people are still using ChatGPT, so I felt like I just should call out Google Bard because the updates are continuing to come. They're expanding the languages. And you'll see here on 510, there was an update where they've added one-click options to export content generated by Bard, including formatting directly into Google Docs and Gmail. And their whole goal is they want to speed up and simplify the workflow by giving you a way to export Bard responses into the different Google Workspace apps. I'm sure this will be good for Google Sheets formulas as well. And I'm very excited for the fact that they just implemented dark mode because that was kind of annoying that that wasn't a thing before. I won't lie, my eyes were hurting. And for me as a Google Workspace user, I did also want to call this out that you can go into your admin settings and as a professional account, have this for all of your users. So for example, all you need to do is go to the app section, go to additional Google services and make sure you go to early access apps, click on this and make sure that it's pressed on. And then once it's on for everyone, you will be able to use this as a workspace account, unlike what was the case a couple of weeks ago. Now, number three is Bing AI and not Bing AI in the way that you're probably thinking. What I mean by Bing AI is the fact that if you go into Microsoft Edge, which is a web browser I should definitely really recommend, is that you can go here to the top right and you can actually integrate 
your entire web browser with Bing AI. A couple weeks ago, they announced that Bing AI was available to everybody. And now I'm able to, for example, just like I did before, write an email to tell my boss I will have the TPS reports available to him tomorrow. And then I can generate a draft. And while it's not gonna have a one-to-one -one integration with Gmail, like what Google Bard's gonna have, it's gonna be able to spit out things right next to it and I could send an email to my boss and paste it out. And I'd have an email written to him about the TPS reports for the quarter. I hope you guys are getting this reference, by the way. You're also gonna be able to generate ideas over here. So what are five ways to make money using generative AI. And as you can see right here, it'll spit out everything that you need right in this little preview section, which is just so cool. The fact that this is in my browser, I'm using it to, as a sidebar on my browser. Now, this is the compose section, but you're also able to use the chat right here. So just in a conversational style, um, what are the three core principles of writing? email and I'm able to have these chat based conversations right next to my email section so I could look for things in Google or in Bing but instead what it's doing is it's taking search data from Bing and synthesizing it as you can see there's different sources here and it's telling me that I need to keep my sentences short and to the point the body of the email should be direct and informative and I need to keep messages clear and brief thanks for the advice appreciate it and I could keep going here there's other suggested continuation prompts. And while I think this is pretty cool, what I also think is cool is if I look up AI news, for example, and I go to insights, you'll see that as I change my page, it'll give me different insights on things here. So for example, this is referencing Google and it's giving me their stock price ticker, which is so cool. It's like getting the page context and then giving me these different insights. So what is Google pixel fold tablet mode? Some key insights from the page that a new large language model, Palm 2. If I just do a control F, you can see it right here. It's giving me context from this section. Does anyone else realize this was a thing that isn't using it? I need, this is like my public service announcement. The fact that you are able to get page context now using Bing AI and Microsoft Edge. Let's go to this Karen AI post by the Washington Post. It's giving us some information about Karen Majori, how she has 22 million followers on social media and the key points of this article. So I don't even have to go through the whole article. I can just read the key points from the side here. Use these responsibly. Be a good consumer. And be a cons consumer of my content by checking out this video right here.